The following is a brief introduction to using LaTeX equations in a markdown environment, specifically Jupyter. This all applies to LaTeX equations in general with a couple minor uh, caveats that we'll put at the beginning. So in Jupyter Notebooks, we write LaTeX equations in markdown cells. And there's lots of good articles online for how to use LaTeX and format it for mathematical uh, typesetting. Um, you can just Google it. Here are some examples. So in Jupyter Notebooks, we can do either, either inline equations. And if we want an inline equation, we surround it with a dollar sign, like this. Dollar sign A equals B dollar sign. That code will become A equals B. If you want it in uh, an equation that's on its own line, then we use two dollar signs. Dollar sign, dollar sign A equals B dollar sign, dollar sign. It puts it on its own line. It centers it. Uh, LaTeX is kind of an exercise in using backslashes and curly braces. So it's easy to get a little bit overwhelmed with all of the different commands and different keywords, but really it's an exercise in backslashes, um, underscore, the superscript key, this ca hat character above the six on the keyboard, and um, so not a lot to know. So if you want to write Greek letters, <coughs> we format those as backslash and then the name of the letter. And if the name starts with a capital, then it will be the capital version of the Greek letter. So alpha equals gamma with capital gamma will give me alpha equals capital gamma. Superscripts, we use this hat character. This is again above the six. So if I go A hat B, I get A to the B. A subscript is an underscore. A underscore B gives A sub B. And if you want more than one character, then you surround it with uh, curly braces. So if I write T underscore max, only the M is part of the underscore. If I want the whole word max to be part of the underscore, then I need to surround max in, in uh, curly braces like so. So this gives T sub M A X, and this gives T sub max. And you'll see this kind of thing all the time. It's a common error, so look out for that. If you want to write fractions, we use the frac keyword, so backslash frac. And then the numerator goes between curly braces, and the denominator goes between curly braces. And you can have any LaTeX code in here you want. Another fraction, superscripts, an integral symbol, anything you want can go between, uh, between this first set of curly braces, and that will be the denominator, and then the denominator. So as an example, the ideal gas law, we have P equals, P equals NRT over V backslash frac, NRT will be the numerator, V is the denominator, and that's what this looks like. If we notice that this is for a single line, if we put it uh, double dollar signs, P equals frac NRT V double dollar sign, then when we run that we get <coughs> the equation on its own line and uh, it's a little bigger because there's more room to work with. So that's pretty common. <coughs> there's some key symbols, partial derivatives backslash partial, infinities backslash INFTY, they've cut out some, some uh, <clears throat> vowels, right arrow, you can guess what the left arrow will be. If you want multiplication symbol like a dot, you can do C dot. <clears throat> Spaces don't really matter in LaTeX, except they do if you are changing words. So the backslash C dot is a keyword, so put a space before you put your next set of uh, commands there. <clears throat> Nabla for gradient symbols, divergence. Um, delta for, is it just Greek capital delta for a delta comparison operator slash le for less than or equal slash ge for greater than or equal sorry I'm gonna say slash sometimes I mean backslash and then less than is just the uh, the angle bracket next to the M on the keyboard um, for less than and then greater than similarly there's lots of others if you click the uh, many more then you can see here's a site it gives lots of different versions. Here's some different kinds of arrows, right, left, harpoons. And uh, those are good for chemical equations that are reversible, for example. And you can Google search to find others. To do a, an integral, we do backslash int, int for integral. And then the underscore will give me the lower bound. And the hat here will give me the upper bound, f of x dx. That gives me this. And if you want a bigger, more characters in your lower bound and put them between curly braces like usual. So sum underscore i equals one up or hat and underscore points. So here you can see the n underscore points is all between curly braces and that in 
has a subscript. So there's a subscript within a superscript, and that works just fine. Here's what it looks like on one line. Here's what it looks like if you put it on its own line with double dollar signs. Has a little more room to work with, so it repositions where those uh, bounds are placed. Um, if you just use parentheses and brackets and curly braces, then it will. Um, they'll usually be small. If you want them to be big and consistent with the equation that's being formatted, you need to use backslash left and backslash right. So a, a big left parenthesis is backslash left parenthesis, and this parenthesis could be a, a parenthesis or a, a square bracket or a curly brace, um, etc. Um, if you want to skip one of those, uh, you can also use like a large uh, vertical bar, which is above the enter key on the keyboard, to give like an absolute value symbol. If you want to skip one of them, then you use backslash left dot or backslash right dot to skip one of those sides. So in this case, we have backslash left dot and then the partial derivative angle bracket, or sorry, vertical bar underscore z. This gives us dy dx at constant z where we don't want the vertical bar on the left. So we've got left dot. That's convenient. You can add spaces with backslash comma. So f of x is a provided the x is greater than 5, we want a little bit of space in there, backslash comma, backslash comma works. There's a phantom keyword, phantom xxx will basically put the xxx in there, but it doesn't show it, so it's just a convenient, easy way to add space. Um, and xxx can be anything, anything you want there. Um, an mbox, so backslash mbox some text. Uh, will let you put if y holds as text in the equation. And um, so there's a uh, M box. You can align equations. So if you do backslash begin align, this is a, an alignment environment, backslash begin curly brace align and align, then the thing between these alignment, that's the code that gets represented. This is convenient if you want to put multiple equations, for example, Let's get rid of these, fix it. So um, in this particular case, yeah, in this particular case, um, the backslash backslash gives a new line character, and the ampersand is where you want the alignment to occur. So if the ampersands are on the equal, that's where they're lined up. If you put the ampersands on before the equations happen, so if I put it here, for example, and 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 maybe some other stuff, then um, then it will. Well, if we put the stuff there, you'll notice that the. Oops. If we keep the ampersands on the equal, but put a bunch of text before the fractions, the ampersands are still the equal signs are still lined up. If we put the ampersands instead of on the equal, if we put them on the, then you can see it lines it up on the, on the left. So again, if we put them on the equal signs, it will line them up on the equal signs. So that's kind of convenient. Um, another thing that's common is to write equations. Like if I have um, f, f of x equals sine of x, Notice that it makes the sign S, I, N. Those are variables, variable S times variable I times variable N. We'd like those to be recognized as the function sign instead. So if you put backslash sign, that'll be a little better. Notice the formatting S, I, N is now sign function instead of variables. And the same thing happens for like logarithm, F of X equals LN of X. You get a nicer format than if you do LN X. So that's also something worth doing. And so that's, that's it. There's lots of other things with LaTeX equations, lots of functions, but this is a quick tutorial that'll get you 90% of the kinds of things that you want to, uh, that you want to format.